one day I heard myself shouting inside my head. It was like this little voice saying, I'm so sick of this. I just want to be rid of this whole nightmare. I want to be rid of this tumor. And I stopped in shock as I listened to this voice inside my head. And I went, wow, there's a lot of anger in there. A lot of frustration. That's a lot of self-attack. If I'm attacking my tumor with all those thoughts of wanting to get rid of it, that's murderous. That can't be healing. And I had never looked at healing in that way. And I realized then that every thought I'd had was actually about making it go away. Now, it, it, that's a conflict. That's a huge inner conflict. And I decided to look at that a little bit more closely. And I thought, well, what would be the opposite? It has to be acceptance. I thought to myself, well, what would it be like if I really accepted this tumor? And this was quite a few years later, but it was, it was absolutely a, a, a turning point in my healing when I realized that my tumor had taken me down a journey I'd never planned. It had taught me things I had never intended to learn. I had changed my career. I had changed my whole outlook. I had learned lots of things about myself and others. I had insights I'd never had before. I'd met amazing people, wonderful people all over the world. I'd had the support of people all over the world. And I realized I liked myself a lot better. And so I thought, okay, I can see that this tumor hasn't been totally bad. What if it has a purpose or a reason for being here? Because obviously it's done a good job so far. So if it's got a purpose for being here and it's still here, maybe there's still a purpose. What, if, what would happen if I gave it permission to stay for the rest of my life? It was six months after I had that realization and I got to the point of accepting the presence of my tumor. I had my routine blood test and went to see my specialist and um, to my surprise my hormone levels were completely normal and when my doctor saw them he just went wow that's incredible and you know I thought it had been a mistake I thought maybe the blood test reading was wrong or something I said well you know so much time has passed and I'm older now maybe my hormones have changed he said no 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 can't be that he said this can only mean one thing your tumor has gone and he said, uh, this is a real credit to you. I don't know how you've done it. I don't know what you've been doing. Um, but I have to tell you, I've seen you for 10 years, and you're not the same person you were 10 years ago. You are completely different. When we make an emotional shift, let's say we go from frustration to joy, those kind of emotional shifts, about 1,400 biochemical changes instantly go off in the body. Now, if you think about the course of one day, all the emotions that we feel, the highs and the lows, and you know the myriad of emotional textures that uh, occur through our perceptions you know, during a day, you can see that, that emotions are creating lots and lots of changes in our physiology. So it makes a lot of sense to start paying attention to the emotional diet as well as to the physical diet. That's one of the keys to better health and certainly to slowing down the aging process. Uh, strong negative emotions just degenerate us. Positive emotional states regenerate us. Become simple math. Feel more love, more care, more appreciation, and your health's got a better chance of improving and staying that way. most profound discoveries made really since the advent of quantum physics is a thing called the zero point field. And what this is, is the energy exchange that goes on between subatomic particles. All subatomic particles engage in a little energy dance. It's almost like a, playing a game of basketball. They send energy back and forth to each other. And in that exchange, a thing called a virtual particle is created just for less than the blink of an eye. Now, that little individual exchange isn't much energy. It's about a half a watt's worth. But when you multiply all of the subatomic particles doing this energy exchange across all things in all the universe, you come up with this unfathomable amount of energy 
all happening out there in empty space, like some supercharged backdrop. While conventional biology focuses on the material stimuli, quantum physics reveals that it's the invisible stimuli that are much more important. There's a simple quote by Albert Einstein that makes sense out of this, and the quote is, the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. What Einstein meant by this very simply is the field, the invisible energy forces around us, uh, they are the sole governing agencies of the particle. Well, the particles matter. And so quantum physics says the character of matter is ultimately determined by the field. How then is healing communicated to another person? Well, you see, there's this field. We're not in this field, we are this field. We're denser, we're lighter in between, we're denser, we're lighter in between, or some people say we're lighter when we're physical form and we're denser in between. Whatever the aspect is, we're blips in this field, this field of energy, of light, of information. We access this field all the time. We pull information from this field all the time. Every one of us has watched a flock of birds in flight and how it changes direction. Instantly, all birds in the flock change direction. So, it seems as if a superior bird brain controls all the birds simultaneously. That only works with the help of those fields, since the fields are able to transfer with no informational loss, and above all, instantaneously, with no time delay. Walk into any great cathedral in the United States, in Europe, anywhere, that's been standing for a hundred years or more, and what you experience is in that cathedral is a hush of awe, reverence, quiet, and it's a palpable experience. Why is that true? It is true because for a hundred of years, the people going into that cathedral have been on their best behavior. They have been in awe and worshipful and in a state of mind that the quantum emissions from the body brain are emitted into that cathedral, absorbed into that cathedral, and fed back in later centuries to the participants coming into it. And that's why they feel a sense of hush, awe, and reverence. We're all part of this giant energy field, this zero-point field, that we're all connected and that were connected across the furthest reaches of the cosmos. Watch an ice skater. There are things that they can do that are not describable in terms of nerve impulses. Nerve impulses and chemical reactions are too slow to explain the subtleties of life. Even now, if you look up the textbooks in psychology, in medicine or biology, and try to find out how the nervous system works, you're confronted with the discontinuity of the system. The nervous system is comprised of neuron cells that carry electrical and chemical impulses throughout the body. If you measure the impulses of the nervous system, we get some of them going at 200 miles an hour, whereas other of them going at two miles an hour, and I think those of the pain reflexes are, are very slow. How on earth the brain or any other part of the body can coordinate the nervous system and, and your very fine movements when these impulses are, are supposed to be traveling at many different speeds is it, just an impossible problem. If you're a dancer, for example, we're moving in three dimensions and you're moving in time. How on earth that person can coordinate all of these important dance steps is quite a mystery. This seems to be impossible with the contemporary model of the nervous system. We need a field theory to explain how the nervous system in all its complexity can coordinate everything that happens in the body. 
we now know when you study nervous system activity that the brain can start firing synchronous pulses throughout different areas of the brain virtually instantaneously. The significance of these coherence of these pulses that begin to fire when actually consciousness is functioning is when scientists looked at how fast you could coordinate all these different areas that were focusing at the same time that the coherence of the firing was faster than the physical ability of cells to communicate from one area to the other so basically these results reveal that the brain is communicating on a higher level than through the physical transmission of nerves our brains also don't work the way we were taught in school learning isn't here memory isn't here speech isn't here this isn't there this isn't somewhere else these aspects are diffuse throughout our brains and we access it from the field so it's as if there's this bandwidth of information that we're always in tune with although not always consciously we're understanding that the brain doesn't have precise addresses for certain things no one's been able to find where memory is for instance and Carl Pribram did some amazing studies years ago um, horrible studies where they taught rats certain runs and then began systematically destroying the rats brains and they found that no matter how much of the brain they removed the rats might have terrible motor skills from that but they would still over and over remember the run and from that Pribram understood that you couldn't say that memory has one precise address that it's much more delocalized and in fact most radically that memory might not exist inside the skull at all but maybe somewhere out here in the field and so what you have instead of this localized centralized system is much more of a paradigm where the body is an interaction it's not something that ends here it's something that ends out here and that we have an interaction taking place between us and our environment us and the field at every moment I had an irregularity on a kidney that was discovered by an MRI. The physicians wanted to operate, biopsy that, and I said, no, we're not going to do that. And I had a healer, Adam, a young man in Vancouver, who was developing his talents as a healer. He wanted to work on it over a period of a month. We did that once a week. Using just a photograph, Adam can perceive a person's body field in the form of a holographic image. He sees areas where the energy flow is blocked, which indicates illness or injury. Through his intention to heal, he manipulates energy and information to clear these blockages, allowing the body to change. I went back and had a sonogram made of that a month after diagnosis. The radiologist examined the data and said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. But the irregularity in the kidney is smaller and disappearing. Went back three months after that, in, uh, early later in 2003, after that, uh, where the total healing period had been less than six months, and again had sonogram, and it was totally gone. Everything was regular again. Nearly all of the healings that I have worked with have been remote or at a distance. And it doesn't seem to make 